Well, welcome to another part. This part, we're going to talk a bit about how the lava simulation will be implemented. And now let's talk a bit about having that lava in there. And I'm going to copy paste my wrangle that I have here because we want to create a new mask. So just in case, let's say we will remove the old mask. So clear mask from before, and we're going to make a new mask from the curve again. Now we don't want the mask to be that large again. So we're going to set it back maybe to 70. And maybe we can do a remapping. So let's do a height field remap. And we're going to remap the mask. So instead of height, we're going to type in mask. And with this, I can now remap here, as you can see, a bit more accurately how I want things to go. So let's say I want roughly something like this. What I will apply then on top of it is probably distortion. And only on the masking. Let's uh, maybe see if we can find some interesting values over here. Something like this looks quite interesting. So it's up to you how much you want to change the, the values. I do maybe want to slightly blur. So let's see if we're going to blur those areas a bit more. Uh, just so the lava has like it's in an easier time flowing there and you can always like modify this later on. So let's now see if we start to play around with that solver. So we're going to type in shallow water solver. This is like an actual simulation. You can even go into side in the side to note and you can see that this uses like a top simulation. Um, so we can plug this in and if you press play, probably you won't see much happening. The reason for that is we need to, of course, uh, visualize it and also define some properties. First of all, let's visualize it by going to output, visualization mode, change this to change this to color by the water data. And you can see that there is some water data. The water data we see here is actually coming from the erosion pass that we did. This also generates something which is called a water. We can actually see it here. It's generating the water data. And the water data itself is then used here as well in this node because under the bindings, it's called water. So we're actually using water layer from here as well. So if I press the simulation, we can actually see that there is some simulation already happening on the water. So you can see it is changing or flowing the water through the terrain here with an actual simulation. Now, in case we don't want the water, we can simply blast them away here. There is another way to do it as well. I'm just going to simply say remove water and if we now preview the simulation, uh, we won't see much. Now, what we will do is then go to bindings and our search layer needs to be a mask. So we generated the mask before, like you see, and this will now be the mask for the lava. And now we have the lava flowing inside this terrain. So this starts to look pretty cool, create some nice shapes, as you can see. Um, so a few things that we can change to maybe improve the simulation and maybe depending on your terrain, you might have issues getting some results. So I will probably make a few changes. So the first change I make usually is actually increasing the time scale. So it just calculates uh, quicker. So for each frame, we are sort of like scaling up that uh, by five times. Maybe we can add a little bit of velocity diffusion here. Uh, we don't need to enable the dampening. We do want to maybe enable the speed. So in some terrains, it might be very useful to enable, to limit the speed. Otherwise, you might get really weird artifacts. And I recommend limiting the speed and playing around with values like two or three or four. These are usually values that I quite like. Uh, and there might be some differences. Uh, you can also here uh, set the initialization of some of these properties. So let's say, for example, that our sourcing happens, for example, every frame. You might see a bit more water now being flown down, but in this case, it's quite consistent. But you can see it will, it will definitely keep stacking up the water over time. Then from there, uh, we can also here have the scaling. Maybe we can lower that scaling a bit because the scaling also deforms the height field as well. And we don't want to deform the height field too much in some cases. So you can see we're now having some nicer results and we can play around with this more. Now let's preview this with a more uh, lava look. So we're going to open the node here and I'm going to change this here, the visualizer. 
so all the way at the end here. I'm going to change the visualizer here instead of this water color to a black body color. So you can see this is now more Laval color. Um, you can remove the darker colors to something that's a bit brownish, so it's like uh, more of a terrain. And another thing we can do is also re uh, climb the range better, for example, like this. So now we can see these really cool effects happening. So you can see we are starting to get like really cool shapes here. And for example, if we remove the blur, we can even sometimes enhance certain shapes like this. So you can see you can start to make really interesting shapes by playing around with the noise on top of the lava you have. So let's say we are really happy with this, we can for example then stick with this. You can also apply a different noise, so if you apply uh, you know, an additional noise in here, we can again uh, make something else out of this. This is worth playing around with depending on what you want. But this looks pretty cool, so we might stick with this for the time being. This is sort of done. So this is the main part of the lava simulation. And another part is then, of course, saving this for Unreal. And what we can do with Nanite is actually convert this back to a geometry. So we can apply a height field convert node. And we can use this now to have this as actual geometry. So you can see we can export this as a higher point mesh. So right now we're around probably a million. Uh, but we can have something like this or even higher resolution exported to Unreal. Another cool thing before I move on, uh, we'll be getting some of the velocity data, which I will also talk about in a later video. So it is possible to get the velocity data from this simulation. And the way we do that is by making a grid that is the same size as our height field, uh, which was originally a thousand by thousand. So this should be roughly the same size now. And on top of that, we will scatter uh, a bunch of points. So apply a scattering node. And we do want to have a good amount of points. So let's say maybe 20,000. 20, let's see what that gives us. We have a nice amount of points. Uh, and then a way to get like some velocity data could be then using what is called a volume trail node. And this will help us to here plug in our points and then here plug in velocity data or the volume data. So you can see automatically, you can see there is something going on here. We are previewing some of the data from that uh, height field. What we want to do is give a search on the specific namings. So let's check the names of the data, which is probably called just velocity or vel.y or set. So we're going to type in same here. So vel dot and then we're going to use that icon here to only extract or to specifically extract that data so you can see it only now we have a bunch of points but the data is only available for these areas where we masked it basically we can also have the trail length and now you can actually see it maybe i zoom in a bit more here now we can start to see all the velocity data which is super cool to use so we actually have now a very natural way to guide or flow the data in or mesh now. So that will be covered for a later video. But that's basically how we can use that uh, velocity data or if you want to extract it. You can bake this into a texture as well. Like if you want to bake this into a texture map or something, and we can do that as well. But this is how we can extract some of that data. And that was it for this video. So we mainly talked a bit about how to add some lava effects into our terrain. And let's move on to the next video, talking a bit more about the geometry preparations for Unreal.